All roads lead to Yah. Let's jump right in. Samuel Thompson. He was a he was known as one of America's first great herbalists. He was a devout believer with no formal education, yet he healed every ailment of his day. He took Psalms 104, 14 literally, when it says, "He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb." for the service of man, mm -hmm. that he may bring forth food out of the earth. He used the earth to service man and heal them of their ailments. He only used that which Yah had made, the plants, the barks, the roots, etc., and was very successful at healing sickness and disease with him, even when the formerly, the formerly educated allopathic doctors of his times could not. In fact, in large part, the AMA, the, that is the American Medical Association, exists today due to its former success. See, and a lot of people have no idea that this history even exists. It's believed that by many that he, they essentially formed the AMA to ensure that no other Samuel Thompsons would ever be able to compete with them in the future. Mm -hmm. Samuel Thompson, he actually patented his system of healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is at the height of his heyday, the Thomasonians, they were called the Thomasonians, you know, it was um, estimated that something like 35 to 40 percent of, of the population was adhering to the Thomason Thomasonian method of, uh, of healing, system of healing. You know, even, it even crossed borders and, and was prevalent over in Europe as well. All right, so these Thomasonians, they took Samuel Thompson's patented system of healing, and they went, they went rampant with it, you know, and they were on the verge of, they were on the verge of putting the allopathic medicine, you know, out of business. You know, they, they, they definitely had a fight on their hands, and even as, um, as in today's time, they tried to do everything they could, you know, to come up against them. You know, they, uh, they tried to kill them a couple times. You know, uh, they actually took them to court, you know, because one of the, one of the, uh, the center pieces of his system was a nerve called lobelia. And they said it was poisonous, and but yet he was healing every ailment known with his system, and that was the cornerstone of it. Mm -hmm. So they took him, someone had, had died, you know, because when Yah says it's your time, it doesn't matter what no man um, say or do, I mean, it's your time. But someone had, had, had died, and, and they actually lied and conjured a story and said, said that it was his medicine that killed him. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is a real court case that can, that, that's documented and that can be looked up, you know, and um, verified if anyone chooses to do so, you know, but they went to court and he won, you know, with the car stacked, with the deck stacked, stacked against them, the, everyone was against them, the judge said, you know, is this the substance that, uh, he took the little billion, he said, is this the substance that, that's in question? You know, because so many people who had been healed by his method was testifying in, in his behalf. You know, so what the judge did, he said, okay, well, we'll see if it's poisonous. He took the bottle and drank it. You know, and lo and behold, he didn't die. <laughs> you know, so Samuel Thompson won the case. You know, but they did. They did just about bankrupt, you know. Um, and then he had a, a lot of other encumbrances. You know, folks was coming up against him, and you know they were trying to they were trying to, to put him out of business. But he stayed in business until the, until he died. 
and his system survived for years after, you know, but then they made the American Medical Association, mm -hmm. you know, so that no more Samuel Thompsons would arise. You know, and today we can see that they greatly succeeded. Henson wants to um, publicly practice medicine within America, they need to first become a licensed member of the AMA, which forbids any practices, methods, procedures, etc., that don't align with, with their mandates, regardless of its effectiveness. Mm -hmm. This is a quote from Dr. Benjamin Rush. He was the physician to um, George Washington. Uh, he was a Revolutionary War veteran and one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence and a delegate to the Continental Congress. He said, unless we put medical freedom into the Constitution, a time will come when medicine will organize into an undercover dictatorship mm -hmm. to restrict the art of healing to one class of men mm -hmm. and deny equal privilege to others. It will yes. be the constitute of the Bastille of the medical mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. All such laws are un-American and despotic and have no place in a republic. The constitution of this republic should make special privilege for the medical freedom as well as religious freedom. Mm -hmm. Good luck Unfortunately, they did not heed his advice. Mm -hmm. And this is precisely what has happened. Mm -hmm. Even if one can effectively heal cancer, as many have, you know, do the research, you'll find there's been many that have been out there who have who have overcame it. If you can't do it with their methods, with the AMA uh, methods, and within their guidelines, then you won't be allowed to do it in America. They will run you out of the country, kill you, or do whatever they have to do, jail you, you know, in order to stop you. Hippocrates, who's noted as the father of modern medicine, was even an herbalist. And he was quoted saying, let your food be your medicine, and your medicine be your food. Now, why don't they honor their father and adhere to his precept? I, for one, thought it was very sound advice. If we just do this, we'd be a lot better off. But I guess I shouldn't fret for him. Hippocrates was alive today. The father, me father of medicine or not, he still wouldn't be able to uh, practice medicine in America, in, in America today. He still would be disallowed. You know, so how many sheep are suffering from some sort of chronic medical Disease, or in their terms, disease, medical disease, or symptoms such as weight gain, aches, joint pains, headaches, stomach issues, allergies, etc. Many of you also probably think that since you're living pretty much the same as everyone else, that your lifestyle and diet isn't the source of your issues. Of course, you would be wrong. There are also those who know that their lifestyle and diet being filled with processed food, junk foods, and fast foods are major contributors to their condition. They, there's that's the other type of person. They know that their, their lifestyle is crap. They know the food that they're eating is crap, but yet they just can't do crap about it. <laughs> or won't do crap about it, you know. But what if you're one of the many sheep that eat all the good foods, who carefully avoid the bad foods, eating only those recommended by the specialists? Many are convinced that they're eating good, quote unquote, based upon what they've been told. The sad reality is that the so-called specialists have been lying to the American public all along. You know, a lot of people don't know that, uh, you know, the five food groups, dairy wasn't actually a part of them. <laughs> you know, that fifth food group was invented by guess who? The dairy industry. <laughs> Who else has has an uh, incentive to promote a fifth food group, you know, <laughs> being dairy? The dairy industry. You know, the, the key in y'all sheep will becoming well is centered around knowing what the proper lifestyle consists of. You know, that's why we went through this series so that you guys can know that y'all sheep can know what his life, what Yah's lifestyle consists of, as well as which foods are healthy for one in particular, and which are not, that one might begin to make the right choices. See, what's, what's, what's healthy for me may not be healthy for you. Yeah. See, in the people, a lot, many of Yah's people don't understand that concept. 
It is the food that one eat that set the tone for the internal landscape of the body, and the internal landscape of the body is everything when it comes to good health. We're going to talk about one of the turning points in science. It's called the germ theory. The germ theory was invented by Louis Pasteur. He, he finally figured out how diseases were spread, right? Now, the germ, the germ theory of disease was proposed by Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur. He said every human disease is caused by a microbe or germ which is specific for that disease, and one must be able to isolate the microbe from the diseased human being. You know, and this is, this is their method of operation even now still today. He also proved, this is Louis Pasteur, also proved that these microbes could be killed by the heating of the liquid. And this is why we have pasteurization. You know, but he didn't invent nothing new, I'd have you know, because Yah knew that that heat would kill kill the bacteria as well. You know, so he instilled within our immune system whenever we get sick, we get a fever. You know, but the smarty pants allopathic medicine, they, they wanna break the fever. You know, they they break the fever and let the, the bacteria run rampant. Mm. You know, let, let the microbes just run rampant. See, the body's natural immune system is to heat up the, uh, the, the liquid, heat up the, the, um, the system so that it'll kill the excess bacteria. You know, so y'all knew about this way before Louis Pasteur even mm. ever thought of it. The germ theory of disease, 1876, Koch showed that bacillus anthraxis caused anthrax. This was supposedly the first proof that a microbe is able to cause disease. Koch's postulates, suspected organism must always be found in diseased individual and never in healthy, must be cultivated in pure culture. Pure cultures must cause same disease in susceptible animals. Same organism must be re-isolated. You know, these are his, his postulates. Now, prior to the acceptance of the germ theory, surgery was conducted without gloves, masks, or antiseptic. Mm -hmm. Surgeons' gowns and smocks were only to keep spurting blood off their clothing and were not changed between operations. Mm -hmm. Infections were so common that more than half of the patients for some procedures died afterward due to the to infection. The germ theory changed all this. But the germ theory of disease, is it correct or complete? And actually, in all actuality, it is not. You know, yes, germs do exist. Yes, they are always found where there is disease. But that doesn't necessarily make them the cause of disease. Right. It's just like you find flies wherever you find crap. <laughs> but does the crap cause the flies? No. No, they do not. But the flies come as a result of right. the crap. Right. Yeah. Something that the flies is attracted to. Well, this sparked a beef, if you would, betwixt Louis Pasteur and Antoine Bichamp. Now, Louis Pasteur, is, of course, we just um, went over, is the father of, of the germ theory, which is also known as monomorphism, which says that a microorganism is what it is, and that's what it will be until it dies. Hmm. Now, this is the theory of modern medicine uh, that modern medicine holds to even today. They believe that the disease is essentially an invasion of germs from outside the body, and the only way to cure a person of a disease is by destroying the invaders. This is why they do chemo. This is why they do the radiation, you know, and, and things of that nature. They're trying to destroy the invaders. But unfortunately, they're destroying the inhabitants also. On the other hand, Antoine Bachamp fathered the theory of pleomorphism, which says that when it comes to microorganisms, it's not always as it appears. 
that there are various stages of development for microorganisms and that they do not necessarily remain as they are, but are subject to change based upon their landscape. He found that microorganisms within the blood, he found such microorganisms within the blood, he called them microzymas or microzemas. And notice that as an individual became sick or diseased, that the microzemas morphed. That is, they changed. The champ therefore determined that disease comes from within the body and not from outside the body. It's a big difference, right? Mm -hmm. Then there was another guy who was a scientist by the name of Claude Bernard. And he too witnessed that the, witnessed this morphing of the, of the microzemas and agreed with the champ that it was due to their internal landscape and he found that it was only when the landscape changed that the microzemas began to change. Determined to find out why the landscape of the blood was changing, he found that the determining factor of the landscape changed as its potential hydrogen, also known as pH, changed. Therefore, Bernard determined that disease within the body is a process initiated by a negative internal landscape which is controlled by pH. Now, today, some biologists have demonstrated that by specifically altering the media, that is, the landscape, up to 16 distinctly different microbes can be cultured from a single source species, thereby proving that Claude Bernard and Antoine Bachamp was correct. They know this nowadays. Now, today, scientists know this, and they have a propensity to merge and develop into various life forms, these, these microbes. What type of life forms they become is dependent upon their DNA as well as the environment in which they live. Therefore, scientists can look at the DNA of some germs, such as uh, pro protozoa, and know that they will eventually be, become uh, what they will become if conditions are right. So they, they done learned this. But there are also protozoa that exist which doesn't have DNA such as the microzemas that exist within our blood. These microzemas within our blood, they don't have DNA, so there's no way to, to predict what they will become under uh, certain stimuli as those with the DNA. So, essentially, we had the terrain versus the germ theory, and which resulted in the misfortune for all mankind. The battle to establish the internal terrain as the basis of physiology, health, and healing was eventually lost. Pasteur and his associate, Robert Koch, waged a successful propaganda war which promoted simple vaccination as the easy solution to a disease-free life. And this is why we have all the vaccinations nowadays. The use of vaccines and drugs was a huge commercial success then and now. Germ theory today, modern Western medicine continues to be based on the erroneous concepts of the germ theory because around it exists a colossal supportive infrastructure and commercial interest that built billion dollar pharmaceutical industries. This is a quote by Dr. Bernard Jensen. Germ theory today, there are about 10 times as many bacteria within our system as there are cells in our body. And we have billions of cells. So you just think about that. Our immune system renders these bacteria harmless by working to keep the internal landscape conducive to good health. As long as the internal landscape is in, in, in proper standing, then they won't morph. They will remain friendly. You know, but they're ever in our face, they're ever within us, you know, walking around saying, don't start, no, won't be none. <laughs> Don't start none, won't be none. When the, envir when the environment changes, so does the bacteria. You know, so now here it is, you start doing something you're not supposed to be doing, you, you cause the environment to change, and it becomes hostile towards them, then guess what? They begin to morph and become hostile towards you. So instead of being friendly and actually helping the system, they become aggressive and, be and start working against the system. 
and bring, bring about this ease in the body. You know, so, you know, this is important to understand. Now, armed with this information, it should be evident that one of the most important things we can do towards good health is to keep our internal landscape in good standing. That is, at the proper pH. As, for as aforementioned, Claude Bernard discovered that the pH is the determining factor for our internal landscape. Therefore, pH becomes a gauge as to whether or not our health is in good standing or is taking a turn for the worse. There is nothing more, this is nothing more than Yah's law of chemistry at work. That's all it is. It's the laws of chemistry that Yah put in place. You know, he put in place that when the environment is in, in, in disarray or when it's like this or that, that these, these uh, microbes begin to morph. Claude Bernard's theory concerning pH being essential to good health has since been proven, and all of today's medical physiology textbooks acknowledge the fact that pH is one of the most essential biochemical balances within the human body. Potential hydrogen or pH is essentially a figure expressing the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution on a logarithmic scale from 0 to 14, with 7 being neutral. Lower values depict more acidity, and higher values depict more alkalinity. Now, it's important to note that contrary to popular belief, the human body has more than one pH. <gasps> you know, you hear all this talk about alkaline water, high pH water. You know, let me tell you, too alkaline is just as bad as being too acidic. You know, there's, there's a theory or a concept that's going around that says no disease can live in an alkaline environment. That is a non-truth. In other words, it's a lie. Uh -huh. You know, trust and believe. If you're too alkaline, not only will sickness and disease live within the body, it will thrive. Uh -huh. Same being if you're too acidic. You know, and people, don't, they just, they don't think, you know, when, when folks, folks are telling them stuff. You know, it sounds good. Yeah, mm. you know, I don't heard people say, yeah, you know, I'm trying to keep my pH up about 8. <laughs> really? You're going to be a very sick individual if you meet that goal. Mm. You know, folks don't understand, you know, that that's not a good thing. It's important to note that contrary to popular belief, there is more than one solution in the body. You know, a lot of people think that there's, there's only, only blood. You know, blood is definitely one of the body's primary solutions, but you also have lymph fluids, you have intercellular fluids, you have gastric fluids, and others, which are also major contributors to good health. And all these fluids have a pH. The pH of the gastric juices in the stomach should be around a three. The hydrochloric acid should be around a three. That's very, that's that's very, very strong, very strong um, solution. You know, but on the other hand, end of the scale, your bile should be very alkaline. You know, and that's how your digestion works. It brings that that acidic substance, that very low acidic substance together with that high alkaline substance and you have like a little explosion that takes place. You know, and that's what breaks the foods apart and causes the body to, to uh, simulate the things that's needed from it. If that happens. Now, you heard me mention this guy's name last week. I just figured I'd formally introduce you today. And no, he's not winking at you. He only has one eye. Reason being is because he was an ex-war vet and he actually got blown up. Remarkable story of this man. You know, he actually got blown up and he said everybody everybody in this um that was in the vehicle with him died. They hit a landmine. And it got blown up and he he was noted saying that the last thing he remembered, he, he remembered that he was up so high 
and he was looking down, and he said, the last thing he remembered was, you know, wow, that's going to hurt when I, when I come back down. You know, and when he came back down, you know, he, he actually, he actually um, was passed out. He didn't wake up until weeks later. And the first thing he said, wow, that was a soft landing. <laughs> but he was, he was in the bed, paralyzed from the neck down. He was paralyzed from the neck down. He had uh, shrapnel all through his body. Some shrapnel uh, was lodged into his pancreas, which they couldn't get out, which eventually brought about his death. You know, because it was um, poisoning the system, his, his, his body. You know, but this guy, he developed a, a system of healing. Um, and he was a very devout believer. In fact, remember I said he was paralyzed from the neck down. He went to a healer and Yah healed him. He went to a Christian healer and Yah healed him. And that's how he began walking again. And, you know, from that point, you know, he began to, you know, do his thing in, in the health field as well as the agricultural field. You know, now I want you to take note that even though the pH is an essential tool to gauge the internal landscape, it isn't the only essential tool that's needed. So you can't just go and get some pH tape and think that you're good. You know, most people have never heard of this guy. Doc, his name is Dr. Kerry Reams. And he was said to be friends with Einstein. He was a trained mathematician, a biophysicist, a biophysicist and a biochemist. Now, Reams tested, testified that in 1931, during a period of prayer and fasting, that he received the divine revelation of the biochemistry and mathematical equation of perfect health, which he said was 1.5. Well, no, no sense, y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but. Uh, he would spend the next 50 plus years proving it. And within these 50 plus years, he never found it to be wrong, not once. Reams created what's known as RBTI, which stands for Reams Biological Theory of Ionization. And he taught that living cells are built by an ionization process. You know, if anyone's familiar with, with uh, like silver plating or gold plating, you know, what he taught was that when your digestion breaks, breaks and loose these, these, uh, the foods into tiny particles, you know, that hmm. your organs, your, your body has magnetism in them. I don't know if, you are, if, if everybody knows that, but yeah. your body has, has magnetism. It, your body has electricity in it. It has electricity and magnetism, you know. And when the digestion breaks your foods down into these very tiny particles, which he referred to as anions and cations, you know, the organs would attract the particles that they needed, and it would be like, like plating. And this is how your organs were built, and this is how they're rebuilt, you know. And all your cells are constantly dying off and being rebuilt. As a matter of fact, you know, when it gets to the point where your cells, you know, die off quicker than they can be rebuilt, you die, you know, of old age, preferably. <laughs> you know, so Reams created RBTI and taught that living cells are built by an ionization process. He was a very devout believer and spoke of this ionization process as Yah's laws, putting things together and taking them apart, ion by ion. He also believed that he was commissioned by Yah to help others improve their health, and that's just what he did, and hereby he became famous for healing the hopeless cases of cancers and all, of all sorts. He determined, he often exclaimed that he te tested his theory for 60 years and never found it to be wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, they likewise came up against him. They took him to court time and time again. They tried to kill him, I think, two or three times, mm -hmm. you know, so on and so forth, you know. Everyone who stands for righteousness, you know, will suffer persecution. You know, just like the word says. 
Reams actually began his career in the agricultural industry where he developed methods of agriculture that pushed nutrient content of foods to their upper potential. These methods are perfectly sustainable, avoiding much of the negative attributes of conventional agriculture. He made pesticides almost unnecessary by increasing the sugar content of the crops so that they'd be undesirable to pest. You know, so all that, all that stuff is not necessary. His focus was on remineralizing the soil and then making those minerals available to the plants. The average supermarket carrot has approximately 30 milligrams of calcium and virtually no trace elements. But rings proved that if grown correctly, it could contain upwards of 500 milligrams of calcium and 100 times the trace elements. And the same basic principle applied to virtually every other type of fruit, vegetable, grain, nut, or seed. You know, he had done this competition one time uh, for, uh, I think it was growing <coughs> pumpkins. And he grew his pumpkin and won the contest three years straight with the same pumpkin. Yes, with the same pumpkin. See, because what he found is when vegetables have their proper nutrient uh, mineral base, you know, that's what makes them sweet, is the minerals that's contained within them. When they have their proper mineral um, base, that they won't go bad for a very long time. Mm -hmm. The more densely populated with minerals, the longer they'll last you know, naturally. And that's how he kept the same pumpkin for three years and won. <laughs> Every three years he just put it up and then pull it back out next year and <laughs> take it right back up there. You know, and the pumpkin didn't go bad. Mm. You no, know, it was during those several days of fasting while Dr. Reams was meditating on Genesis 2-7 that he, that he too came to realize that the internal landscape of the body was everything when it came to human health. He also discovered that all the variables of the human landscape can be determined from a person's urine and saliva. Genesis 2-7 is where it says that man was made from the dust of the earth. You know, and he had done miraculous things with the soil. You know, and the way this all came about where he started doing health was his neighbor, you know, made the suggestion. Um, his neighbor had, had, a, had a young girl, I can't remember if it was a young girl or a young boy, but had a, a small child and they, they kept having epileptic fits. And he they asked Reams, could he could he help him? You know, and they, you know, they were like, you know, hey, you know, we supposed to be made from the dust of the earth and we're soil, you know, then how come the things that you're doing with the soil and helping the soil, you know, if we're really made of soil, then it should help it should help people too. You know, and so he began to he was praying and fasting and he was meditating on this because he wanted to help the little girl because Allopathic medicine couldn't do nothing for her or him, you know, couldn't do nothing for him. And, you know, so he just began testing every aspect of, 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 of the body. And he, he narrowed it down to the system that, that, um, that he has, that he calls RBTI. And he healed the little girl, or, or boy, whatever it was. Um, he healed them, and they never had any more epileptic fits. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the beginning of his working with um, people, you know. And it is said, you know, in his, in his, uh, I think I have it down here, yeah. Dr. Reams called the system RBTI, which I already said stands for Reams Biological Theory of Ionization, and his test consisted of seven parameters, you know. It, it looked at the sugar, the urine, the saliva, the conductivity, which speaks to electricity in the body. It actually speaks to the salts of the body or minerals. Cell debris, nitrate, nitrogen, ammonia, nitrogen. These tests help rings determine energy loss and its cause, as well as which foods and supplements should be added to an individual's diet to correct their body chemistry. Now, using these figures, he could calculate where the person's energy level was, the condition that the energy level in conjunction with the internal landscape will bring about, such as exactly where a tumor was forming, and he could even predict when a person might get a heart attack with astounding accuracy. Mm -hmm. 
you know, even five years down the line. You know, he would tell the person, if you don't do nothing, if you don't change nothing, and you keep living the way you're living, then this is what's going to happen. And he'd be right every time. You know, he started a health retreat in Blue Ridge Mountains, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia. People seeking wellness will come to his re retreat for several weeks and be given a diet to suit their body chemistry. Many of them left feeling better than they ever felt in years. His success with treating terminal cancer patients were, um, which were abandoned by allopathic medicine to die in peace was excellent. You know, it's estimated that they, they, they took thousands of these type patients who were given up, you know, by the med allopathic medicine to die. And out of thousands, you know, some say upwards to 10,000, he only lost six. But utilizing what Kerry Reams taught the world, by utilizing what Kerry Reams um, taught the world, the world could truly be changed. Millions of acres of totally worn out land could be redeemed and fully become fully productive again. Millions of people that have suffered for years with illnesses can be healed. He offered so much that could benefit the world, yet he is virtually unknown by most people. That's incredible. You know, but it just, certain information, certain truths get suppressed. Just like, just like the truth of Yah's word, it gets suppressed. You know, they have engines that can run on hydrogen, run on water, that can get three, four, five hundred miles to the gallon. You know, but that information is suppressed. You know, you'll never, you'll never see. You know, they, you know, Tesla um, was said to have created a system of energy where it would draw the energy from out the air and you wouldn't even need to plug anything in. You know, all your stuff would just work. They have that technology now today, you know, but it's suppressed. Mm -hmm. They won't bring it to the people. Why? Because there's no profit in it. Mm -hmm. You know? So, these things you have to know and understand. We go to their schools, and they school us. And that may be okay, but we need to become responsible for our own education. Amen. There's a difference between schooling and being educated. When you schooled, you're going to know what they want you to know. When you become educated, you're going to know what's needed to be known. You're going to know everything there is to know or most of what there is to know. So when you edu educate yourself concerning a subject, you learn not only what they want you to know, but you learn the things that they suppress as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot, you can put the light in a box, but you can't keep it there. Light will always peer through even the densest substance. You know, and if you look for the light, you'll find it. The truth concerning whatever it is that, you, that you're dealing with, it's out there. And it can be found and searched for. You know, I suggest that folks begin searching for these things. You know, stop just listening to what you've been schooled. Stop just listening to what they've told you. The infamous they. Who are they anyway? Do they really have your best interests at, at, at heart? Or do ya? Listen to the word. You know, they are concerned with them. They're going to make sure they're okay. They are always going to make sure they be okay. They want to stay on the top and keep you on the bottom. You know, so it's, it's by about time that we begin to educate ourselves and then in turn begin to educate our children. Even if we send them to the schools to be schooled, still our responsibility is to educate them. You know, that's our responsibility. Not some strangers. You know, that, that's going to tell them what they want them to know. And I'm not even going to get started on that. Now, there are other alternative systems of healing such as um, one that founded biomedics or 
Dr. Schenker's analytical, analytical system of nutrition, metabolic typing, etc. And what, all, what they all have in common is that they utilize an individual specific approach to health. And I think this is essential. Their focus is to educate one based upon their bio-individuality. Everyone has a bio-individuality. You turn each one of us inside out, there's, we're different. Yes. Everyone is different. Everyone has a bio-individuality. That is to say, based, you know, they, they form their, their, their suggestions based upon one's own metabolic picture rather than their particular symptoms as done with allopathic medicine. Allopathic medicine, they do tests and things of that nature, but they're looking for symptoms. Their theory, their ideology is completely different. They're looking for symptoms so that they can gather symptoms so that they can put a label upon them. Once they put that label upon them, then this is, that is the dis-ease or disease that you have. And based upon watching how people with that dis-ease or disease have fear throughout time, they give you a diet, um, they give you a prognosis. The disease itself is a diagnosis. They give you a prognosis based upon, you know, the information that they've gathered concerning that disease, you know, and that becomes your prognosis. And then they also have their treatment that they will treat you for that diagnosis and to help manage that prognosis in your life. That's about the extent of what they're trying to do. They, they believe that the body gets broken and, can, and it needs them to fix it, you know, and, and they can't do it. They don't believe that, that cures exist, so they believe that what they need to do is help you manage your disease. And that's all they're, they're trying to do. You don't got to take my word for it. Ask your doctor. <laughs> Just ask him. You know, do you think I can be healed? I'm sorry. I'm, I, you know, they'll tell you right off the bat. No. Um, you know, but we can manage your symptoms. You know, make it, make it more tolerable for you. That's their objective. You know, so it is this metabolic picture that is key for everyone is different. Even identical twins will have vastly different metabolic pictures due to their individual taste. For it's these individual tastes that would determine what and how much or less one will consume and thereby inadvertently aid in determining one's metabolic picture. You know, you have to think about it. You know, you have two identical twins. One loves vegetables, the other one don't. Well, the one who loves vegetables in terminal terrain is going to be different than the one who who don't love vegetables, who just want to eat meats and cheeses. You know, they're not going to, they may look alike on the outside, but they're not going to look alike on the inside. You know, and then they can eat the same thing. But because of one's likes and dislikes, they're, one would tend to eat a little more or a lot more of, of some things and less of others, which again causes the internal landscape to be different. No two people are alike. Mm -hmm. And it's essential that one understands that there, there are several different metabolic um, pathologies that lead people to the same symptoms. For example, you can have five people that all have high blood pressure, but all due to different causes. You know, with this in mind, it, it shouldn't be too hard to see why one size doesn't fit all when it comes to remedies, medicines, diets, etc. You know, you can have five people with high blood pressure. One can, one can be because of, because of nerves. Another one could be because of constipation. Yeah, constipation will bring about high blood pressure. In case you didn't know. You got to get the cork out. <laughs> you know, one could be due to excess electrolytes in the system. One could be because too much sugar is in the system. You know, if you have too much um, electrolytes, which are minerals and, or, or salts, you have too much salts in the system, it, it causes the blood become, uh, become thicker. When the blood becomes thicker, it needs more pressure to get it through the system. Mm -hmm. Likewise, you know, it can, you can have too much sugar in the system. 
making the blood thick. The blood is too thick, it takes more pressure to get through the system. Or it can be a combination of these things. Again, everyone is different. But if you send five people into the doctor's office, they all gonna come out with the same thing. Blood pressure meds. You know, and that's why you see some people on one, other people on five. You know, think about these things. You know, because they, they, they literally affect our lives and our, our livelihood. You know, one size does not fit all. This explains why something will work for one individual but not another. You ever, you, uh, you ladies, you ever went on a diet and then, you know, the diet worked great for somebody you knew, but when you got on a diet, you like, this diet ain't nothing. <laughs> you know, it didn't, didn't work at all. It's because their internal landscape or their internal terrain was right for the diet. And yours was different. So it worked for them, but it didn't work for you. So in closing, there are five fundamental metabolic control systems of the body which must function properly to keep one's health at its maximum potential. These metabolic control systems determine the internal landscape as well as how efficiently your mind and body functions. They control your body's energy production. They control circulation and heart function. They control brain and nerve function. They determine your efficiency of digestion and assimilation of nutrients. They control the chemical balance in your blood and in your cells. They help regulate your hormone balance. They help you efficiently eliminate the toxic waste products of metabolism. And they minimize the degenerative changes associated with, age, with the aging process. In other words, these five fundamental metabolic controls, controls and drives your mind and body. Another vital point I like to make is that each metabolic control system is diphasic. That is, each have two extremes, and balance is when the body successfully oscillates between these two extremes. Mm -hmm. You know, think of the cardiogram. You know, it goes one extreme to the next extreme. One extreme to the next extreme. Now watch this. Now when it, when it begins to do this, it goes boop, 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 boop. But when it begins, begin to go boop, 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 boop. that's a problem. Because it's just supposed to go from one extreme to the next. It's not supposed to stay up longer up top than it is down the bottom. So when it's going to, from one extreme boop, boop, to the other extreme, that's what we call homeostasis or balance in the body. So don't think about balance in the way that most people think about it, where everything is even, because they call that a flat line. That's just boop. You don't want that. <laughs> You don't never want to hear that. You know, you want to keep it oscillating. You know, you rather have the boop, 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 you know, than the boop, you know. You know, you don't never want to be even in that regard, you know. So, that's what is balanced in the human body. Now, oftentimes, these two extremes manifest the same or similar symptoms. You know, and this is important to understand because this explains why at times one can adhere to a remedy or medicine or a diet, etc., and it'll work really well for a spell, but then after a while the symptoms return and the remedy, medicine, diet, etc., no longer works. And you think, you know, and, and this is what happens. This is what happens. You know, somebody, you know, this is this is a real, real, uh, real, real scenario, you know, someone someone I know. You know, they start they start doing um um, coconut oil, and they were feeling great. I mean, it was like the best thing since sliced bread, you know, and it was working really good for them, you know, and then it got to a point where they were feeling bold again, you know, they were still taking the coconut oil, but they wasn't feeling good, so they, they figured, well, I'm going to double up on it. I must not be taking enough, you know. So they start taking more. See, but what has happened is they went from one extreme to the next. You know, see, you can start taking the, the coconut oil and it'd be doing great because maybe your the, the walls of your cells are, are too permeable. So the coconut will help, oil will help stiffen them up. Okay, which is a great thing. But then when you over when they get normal and you keep taking it. Then you overshoot, and now they become 
two less permeable. So now they're two less permeable, and now you have a problem on the other end of the spectrum. See, but what most people don't take into account is they both extremes often have the same symptoms. So you, they, the symptoms are same or similar, so you think it's the same thing, but it's not. It's for a whole nother reason. It's not because you don't have enough. It's because you have too much, and you start doubling up on it. Guess what you're doing? You're making yourself much worse. Yeah. But that's the way our minds think. If a little is good, then more is better. You know, you can overshoot. You know, and that's why, you know, it's imperative to go by some type of markers so that you know where you're at. You know, you don't want to just be blindly doing stuff. Uh, for example, one person's metabolic picture may determine that they will flourish as a vegetarian, while another's may show that they'll do very poorly as a vegetarian, but would actually flourish on an Atkins type diet, which is a high protein diet. You know, and this is why, you know, uh, Dr. Atkins has so, so much great success. You know, he has success with those whose body chemistry was conducive to needing a high protein diet. And this is why you see a lot of vegetarians say, no, nah, vegetarian is the way to go. It's the best thing, you know, in the world. You know, well, for some people to become a vegetarian, it will kill them. Literally. You know, if their body chemistry isn't in the right place, it could actually kill them. And for someone to do the Atkins diet, if their body chemistry isn't conducive for it, isn't in the right place for it, it could kill them. You know, so, you know, you need to go, be going off of something other than it worked for this person. You see what I'm saying? You know, we have to get to where we're, we're, we're dealing with things based on a bio-individuality approach, a, a, a individual-specific approach rather than a symptomatic approach. You know, yeah, this is, you know, this helped my headache. You know, but that don't mean it's going to help their headache. It, their headache could be for a different reason. So with an individual specific approach to help, you can learn what your particular metabolic picture looks like as well as what to do about it. That is, which foods, vitamins, minerals you sh should or shouldn't consume. You know, and this is imperative because, you know, you, you may be thinking you're trying to do the right thing, but, you know, the right thing that you're doing just isn't right for you. You know, but they say this is good for you. Yeah, it is. It's just not good for you. <laughs> It's good for them, but it's not good for you. So my suggestion is that if y'all sheep will find themselves in the need of a health practitioner, that they seek out one that takes an individual-specific approach Amen. to help. You know, it doesn't, you know, it just makes much more sense than the symptomatic approach. You know, I would rather have someone going off of some type of marker, you know, as to if I'm progressing or digressing, than to just, you know, here, take this for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know, because whatever they give you for the rest of your life, you can see from this example, you know, from the example that I gave, you know, yeah, it may be just what you need right now, but there's going to come a point when you have too much of it. Too much of a good thing is not good. No. You know, so... That's all I have for you today. I pray it was a blessing to you.